you tried on those pants that just wouldn't button, or you stepped on the scale and you saw a number that just made you want to pick it up and hurl it at the wall. So now you want to lose weight. In this video, I want to share five things no one tells you about losing weight. But I also want to ask you one very important question first. Is it weight loss that you really want? Hey guys, it's Corey from Redefining Strength, where we help you create the healthiest version of your personal lifestyle to see the best results as fast as possible. Because one size doesn't fit all. Before I go over five things no one tells you about losing weight, I wanna ask you one more time. Is weight loss really what you want? I ask this question because it's really key that we understand that trying to lose weight as fast as possible on the scale might actually be sabotaging our fat loss results. Losing weight faster doesn't mean losing fat faster. It actually often means the opposite. In our desire to see quicker changes on the scale, we go to extremes, which are unsustainable and only truly deplete our glycogen stores, causing us to also lose water weight. It's why we might see immediate big drops in our weight on the scale. It's not fat being lost though. If we do even manage to maintain the extreme measures we've gone to, we end up losing as much muscle mass as we do fat. And while some muscle loss will occur at points in your weight loss journey, you want to do everything possible to maintain as much lean muscle mass as you can. Which brings me to the first thing no one tells you about losing weight. Macros matter most. I can feel the angry mob of calorie counters coming. <laughs> People calm down. But hear me out. Often people say it's only about calories in versus calories out, while also saying that you can't gain muscle and lose fat at the same time, which you can actually do. But it's actually this calorie only focus that creates this issue and belief. Adjusting your macros is key if you want to lose fat and not only retain lean muscle mass, but actually build it. Focusing solely on a calorie deficit won't do this, and it could lead to more muscle mass being lost in your weight loss process. Macros are so key because higher protein diets are the only ones shown to help you not only retain, but even gain muscle while in a deficit. By keeping on more lean muscle as you slim down, you'll promote more optimal hormone levels and even keep your metabolic rate higher. Muscle requires more energy to be maintained, and this higher energy expenditure daily will ultimately make it easier to lose fat. This focus on retaining lean muscle while trying to lose fat is even more key as we get older because it becomes harder to build and retain lean muscle, which leads to more metabolic adaptations with age. So creating more extreme calorie deficit as we get older in an attempt to lose weight faster will only backfire and lead to more muscle mass being lost and more metabolic adaptations. So if you want the best results as fast as possible, you need to focus on those macros. They'll help you fuel your training and even gain muscle as you lose fat. Focusing on hitting that high protein tipping point, consuming 30% of your calories from protein can help you see better fat loss results while even building muscle through a strategically created deficit based on your macro breakdown. The second thing no one tells you about losing weight because we don't want to admit to it because it stinks. I mean, who wants to be patient, right? But we need to realize that results will take longer the longer we've been at our current weight. Think about how long it took you to get into your current position. Think about how long you haven't been at your goal. Often when we're thinking about how long results will actually take, we consider our diet or current workout routine, but we never consider how much our body will fight us to maintain the balance of where it's at currently. Our body simply doesn't like change. It feels threatened with change. It's part of how it protects us to survive. So the longer you've had the weight on, the farther you are from your goal, the longer it'll probably take to get there, especially if it means hitting a new level of leanness you've never achieved before. If you and your friend both gained 15 pounds, but it took you 10 months to put it on and then only two months, you're both going to see results at vastly different rates. That 10 months that it took you to put it on won't be melted off in 10 weeks. You're going to have to plan for a lot longer in order to see the results you deserve. Recognizing that how long we've had the weight on can impact the rate at which we see results is key to help us embrace the process. It helps us gain perspective when we feel like results aren't happening fast enough. The third thing no one tells you is that repeatable habits should be your focus over doing more. When we do want to lose weight, we do turn to making habit changes, but so often we make these massive overhauls to our lifestyle and diet. Our focus is on what will get us results fastest, not on what habits we can repeat day in and day out. Now, this doesn't mean that every habit change will feel easy. Most actually won't feel sustainable to start and they won't be fun. Tracking your food is not fun. Doing the mobility work when you're in a rush and just want to get to the meat of your workout isn't fun, but it can be repeatable if you break things down to meet yourself where you're at. When you're making changes to lose weight, start with those easy to repeat habits. Focus on those small changes daily over doing more. This allows you to build over overwhelming yourself so that you give up on the habits when you run out of willpower or self-control. These repeatable habits are what lead to discipline. As much as these changes feel small and they might feel less than ideal, they will allow you to get consistent. And we get good at what we 
consistently do. If we consistently do habits that will make us gain weight, we will gain weight. If we consistently do habits that will help us lose, we will lose. So focus on repeatable habits that can help you build a lifestyle and see those results snowball. The fourth thing no one tells you that's key we recognize in order to avoid sabotaging ourselves when results are snowballing is that you'll often feel like the areas you want to change are the last to change. And even at points as you've made progress losing weight, they'll look worse. Stubborn areas are more stubborn for a reason. They often contain more of the stubborn type of fat cell and have less blood flow. They're also often the places we gain to first, but they'll be the last we lose from. We may see all the other areas trimming down, but not see any changes really start from the places we care about. Not only is this frustrating, but it can actually make the areas we want to change look worse because we've slimmed down in other points. But don't give up. Giving up is what keeps you from finally losing from those stubborn areas. Often it's simply pushing through, sticking with those boring basic habits and not jumping ship for some fancy fad diet that adds up. And if you're struggling with those stubborn areas and wanna learn more, check out my how to lose stubborn fat video with three tips. I'll link to it in the video description. Now the fifth and final thing no one tells you about losing weight is, what you did to lose the weight will not be what you do to maintain it. Honestly, because the dieting industry is built off of us regaining the weight we lost. A new fast Faster fix is easier to sell you than maintenance. Maintenance simply isn't sexy, so it's never discussed. But maintaining your weight loss is a learned process with its own unique challenges. But one of those challenges is actually being okay with seeing a small increase on the scale. As your body and habits shift from losing weight to those of the maintenance habits you'll need. You can't just keep repeating what you did to lose and stay in a deficit forever. Yet you also can't go back to old habits. You've got to slowly make adjustments to your macros and calories to increase them to a maintenance level while potentially turning to a more even macro split. We have to remember that our body needs and goals are constantly evolving and that our workout and dieting practices can't stay stagnant. So I've included two free resources in the video description to help you do just that. If you've only been focused on losing weight faster, it's time you change your approach. Losing weight quickly doesn't mean losing fat faster and extreme approaches can be harmful. By focusing on healthy habits, you can achieve lasting results with changes that don't feel as restrictive. If you like the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions and subscribe. We're posting new videos each week.